Hello everyone, welcome to the Super Bowl 58 edition of the Bacon Bets podcast, part one. If you listened to last week's episode, you know I'm going to do this in two parts. Today's episode, uh, this week's episode, is going to be relatively short. All I'm going to do is talk about the game. I got a bet locked in on a side uh, and a total. I'm going to bet on both. I will break those down and generally just overall what I think of the game. Next week's episode uh, will be a little bit longer because I'm going to give out Uh, My favorite prop bets, it'll be a prop bet extravaganza, not only just prop bets for the games, I'll also talk Super Bowl MVP, Um, I'll talk some uh, uh, of the exotic prop market, which uh, for the most part lives uh, uh, on offshore sports books, Uh, but that's, you know, those are some of my favorite bets to place for the Super Bowl, Uh, so I'll be talking about those, but this week, uh, I'm going to quickly recap the conference championship weekend, how my bets did, and then I'm just going to talk about uh, the matchup, it is the San Francisco 49ers against... The Kansas City Chiefs, unfortunately, it's the matchup I wanted to see the least. Um, That's the way it is. The Chiefs are the new version of the Patriots. We didn't even get one single season where the AFC was wide open. It went from, I think the the Patriots won the AFC in in three times in the span of four years, and then immediately the Chiefs won the AFC in the span of four times in five years. I, I think that's how it worked out. So... Uh, I do not hate Chiefs fans. I do not hate you. I'm very sour, both on this podcast, on other shows, uh, and on Twitter. But uh, it's I'm not mad at you. I'm I'm just jealous. Is really all it is. Some of us wait a lifetime. Some of us, you know, for a random example, wait 31 years to see their team win a championship. Some people never do, never have, never will see their team win a championship. Some people get to see their team win a championship multiple years in a row. That's the way it is, and I've learned to accept it. Um, some people are mad at me for, like, cheering against the Chiefs. I think I should be cheering for the Chiefs because if you like football, you should be cheering for greatness, which I don't necessarily agree with. Uh, I tweeted this out uh, during the Chiefs game, but to me, even though the Chiefs are a great team, they're the current best dynasty in football, arguably in North American professional sport. Patrick Mahomes is our current GOAT. Uh, or at least greatest of this era, G-O-A-T-E, goat with an E. Um, but like I said on Twitter, Shawshank Redemption is a greatest, is a great movie. Some would say the greatest movie of all time. I don't want to watch Shawshank Redemption a hundred times in a row. I know how the story goes. I know how it ends. I know the different points that are supposed to bring emotion out of you. But at the end of the day, if you sit down and watch Shawshank Redemption, to be fair, even if you watch Shawshank Redemption every year, like once a year, every year, five years into it, you're like, yeah, it's a great movie. I'd like to watch something else, though. And that's how I feel about the Chiefs. I think that's the best way to describe why I'm not cheering for the Chiefs, why I'm actively rooting against them. I watch sports to get emotion, to to watch a different story every year. What I want to see is when a team wins a championship, you know what I love to see? I love to see the videos that come out on social media of kids like videotaping their their 65-year-old dad who never watched, saw his team win a championship, bawling their eyes out at the TV as they watch their team finally win. And he's been waiting 65 years and he's, fi- and he's finally seeing his team win a championship. We're not going to get that if the Chiefs win again. No, we got the same fans get to celebrate again. The same team, the same players win another Super Bowl. Like, congratulations. You already won one. I'm not going to be super happy for you for winning another one. Of course, there are a couple players that that would be new on the team. But overall, it's not like we get to see, you know, an all-time great finally get that ring. It's not like we get to see a city that's been a tortured franchise, a tortured fan base for years and decades finally get a win. No. I don't feel any emotion when I see the same team win a third Super Bowl in five years. I'm sorry, I just don't. So if that makes me a bad guy for cheering for a different team to win, then so be it. I'll take that burden. I'll be the bad guy. So no, I'm not rooting for the Chiefs. The 49ers, I mean, they haven't won in a long time. They've lost a couple Super Bowls uh, their last two, one of them being against the Chiefs. Haven't won since 94. 593 somewhere in that range uh early to mid 90s yeah i'm gonna be cheering for the 49ers would i have rather have cheered for the lions sure uh would i've liked to cheer for the ravens even though they won in 2011 2012 sure lamar the lamar jackson twist was it would have been a great story uh but no um it's the chiefs again um 
it's going to be more of Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. Is that Travis Kelsey or Taylor Swift's fault? No, it's Taylor Swift isn't asking to be put on the broadcast, isn't asked for uh, all these uh, news pro- programs to be talking about her, but uh, it's the way it is. I don't blame them, but it's, uh, am I annoyed of it? Yes. Is it Taylor Swift's fault? No. So here we are. The Chiefs are back in another Super Bowl. Um, so we get to talk with the Chiefs again. How fun. How unique. Last week's bets did not go well. Uh, the Chiefs-Ravens game went well. I walked away with a profit. Uh, obviously did not hit Ravens minus three and a half. Um, hit Patrick Mahomes under 243 and a half passing yards just by a hair. That last bomb to MVS almost screwed me, but he finished with 241. And Isaiah Pacheco did score a touchdown that cash of plus 145. Uh, but then we went 0-3 in the Lions in the 49ers game. Uh, 49ers were covering there uh, for a second, to be fair. I mean, I was asking a lot for them to go from losing to multiple scores in the second half to covering a 6.5-point spread. They were, though, uh, but then the Lions came down and got the backdoor cover. I knew that was going to happen the entire time. Brock Purdy did not hit over 272.5 passing yards, and George Kittle did not score a touchdown. So overall, we went 2-4, and four, minus 1.67 units. Let's hope that we can do better in the Super Bowl. Uh, Got to talk about the Ravens-Chiefs game. Um, I know, I mean, I'm recording this Tuesday night. You're probably going to be listening to this Wednesday morning at the earliest. Um, it's not a hot take. It's a take uh, that everyone has been talking about the Ravens game. And it is an unfortunate aspect of sports betting because, um, to be honest, even though I lost that bet, I thought it was the right read. I thought the Ravens would be able to run the football against the Chiefs. I thought they'd be able to shut down the Chiefs offense. Um, but if, you know, if I got inside information that Todd Munkin and the Ravens offense were going to try to uh, completely change their offense and turn to an air raid offense, then I would have never bet on them in a million years. That was a terrible strategy. I don't know if they just w- thought that they could catch the Chiefs slipping. I don't know if they panicked when the Chiefs scored on their opening drive. I don't know what it was. But uh, And I tweeted this out. The Ravens this season ran the ball on 49.92% of their plays. Then they ran the ball 28.7% of the time against the Chiefs, uh, and most of those um, were uh, scrambles. Uh, I think there was only six, I think, running back runs, uh, and they averaged 5.1 yards per carry. So it's not like they ran 15 times, only got a yard per carry, and then had to abandon it because they were down by a bunch. Uh, They were getting success when they ran the football, Uh, and even in the second half. They are only, yeah, they are down two scores, but 10 points in the third quarter shouldn't make you abandon your entire game plan. So for some reason, the Ravens came out throwing, and they still almost beat the Chiefs. Um, the Ravens shut down. The Ravens defense shut down the Chiefs. Chiefs didn't score a point in the uh, second half, um, and the Ravens outgained them. I'm just bringing it up here. Now I know you're sick of me saying yards per play, but I think it is worth mentioning. They outgained them 5.9 yards per play to 4.4 yards per play, even with the bad game plan and the bad play calling. If they didn't turn the ball over, they still win that game. Um, I mean, Zay Flowers fumbled out of the back of the end zone, and that would have been a touchdown, and they lose by touchdown. Um, Obviously, a minus three turnover differential. Going to be hard to beat any team with a minus three turnover differential, especially going to be hard to beat the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs with a minus three turnover differential. But still... That's football, that's why they play the game, but that is another reason why I find this Chiefs team frustrating to watch and frustrating to cheer for, because when they play a D-plus game, their opponent plays a D game. When they play an A, when their opponent plays an A-plus game, they play an A-plus-plus game. They just, it never happens where their opponent just barely outplays them. No matter what, their opponent shoots themselves in the foot just enough to give them the win. But same thing that happened with Tom Brady's Patriots, You got to be good to be lucky. You got to be lucky to be good. Uh, It's just the way it is. Uh, I don't have much to say about the 49ers-Lions game. I know the talk about that game is more about Dan Campbell, whether or not he should have gone for it on fourth downs. I actually didn't disagree with any of them. Um, It is obvious that in hindsight, um, hindsight's 2020, obviously, he doubled down. He doubled down. If anyone, you know, as who's listening to this has played Jack Blackjack, I'm sure a lot of you have, it'd be like if you got, if you faced, you know, if you got a 10 and a 10, five hands in a row, or I should, it wouldn't be a 10 and a 10, like a five and a five. If you, if you, if you had 10 laying in front of you, five hands in a row, and you double down every single one, and you got four, you got six, you got four, you got five. And then, you know, you, you lose five hands in a row. 
Sometimes that happens. That's what happened to Dan Campbell. In my opinion, they were the right call every time, just like when you have 10 or when you have 11 in a game of blackjack, the right mathematical call is to hit double down, but that doesn't always work out. Sometimes you lose. Sometimes you lose five double downs in a row and you're fucked. And that's what happened to Dan Campbell. He hit five double downs in a row all five times as a mathematical right call. And I don't know if it's just bad luck that game. I don't know if it's the result of the Detroit Lions being a cursed franchise. But he lost all five double downs in a row. And the 49ers won the game. It is what it is. Um, I thought it was a much better game to watch than the Chiefs and Ravens. Um, it is concerning. The, Ra or the 49ers now have barely squeaked by. Needed a second half comeback to beat the seven seed Packers and the three seed Lions both at home concerning yes is it gonna change my opinion uh, on the super bowl we'll find out in a moment because that's all we have left to talk about in this episode uh so let's get into it uh i got a pick for the side and a pick for the total it is part one of the super bowl edition of the bacon bets podcast let's get into it <gasps> i'm not a state i'm a monster <laughs> <laughs> no, Lisa. The only monster here is the gambling monster that has enslaved your mother. I call him Gamblor, and it's time to snatch your mother from his neon claws. All right, let's get into it. Like I said, I have a bet on the side and on the total. I'll give those both out on this episode. Next week's episode, I'll be giving you uh, all of my best prop bets. I'm going to have a ton. I usually have, what, like around 20 prop bets for the Super Bowl? Um, I wrote an article on BetSided, which actually is up now. You can go read it where... Um, <laughs> I wrote down my 58 best bets for Super Bowl 58. So if you just want an absolute rapid fire of bets, check that article out. I will not be betting on all 58, unfortunately. Um, and in that article, uh, at most, I have three sentences for, for a reason for a pick. I'll be honest, trying to find 58 bets on a single game is near impossible. Um, I did it. So if you want to check that out, you can. That is a complete rapid fire. That is... Every bet I could possibly find that I do kind of like, I will not be betting on them. I'll probably, with exotic props uh, included, I'll probably have about 20 to 25 bets uh, for the Super Bowl. But that's for next week's uh, episode. This week, uh, just my favorite side and a total. So the line, if you don't know, opened at 49ers minus 2.5. It immediately got bet down to about um, 49ers minus 1.5. It moved down right away about a point. Uh, it got down to as low as minus one. I even saw almost a pick em. I think the lowest I saw it get, I think I saw minus 112 out there at one point. Um, it then started to move back. It then is now, at least as of Tuesday night, it is minus, is back up actually to minus two at m most sports books. Um, some of them, it is still minus one and a half. So I'm just going to take a look at some New York regulated books. It is minus one and a half, minus 115 at FanDuel. Uh, BetMGM minus two, minus 110. Caesars minus two. DraftKings minus two. Uh, Bet Rivers, if I can find it here. Bet 365, not, not available in, in New York, but Bet 365 is minus two. Um, for some reason, I'm not finding Bet Rivers on this list, but you get the gist. The large majority of places, it is minus two. You can find some minus one and a halfs out there like FanDuel, but most minus one and a halfs. Um, is minus 115. According to Betstamp, the best uh, line right now is minus one and a half in terms of best for 49ers, minus one and a half at minus 112 at pro line. That is for Canadians. If you're uh, an American, uh, you don't get that line. Uh, best line right now is plus two, even money on the Chiefs at profit exchange, but uh, you can find some even, uh, so easy plus two, minus 110s. Uh, if you wanted to bet the Chiefs, the best time to do it would have been opening line plus two and a half. I don't think it'll get back up to two and a half. Um, but still, I mean, you're only missing out on a half point if you bet them now. Um, so when the line was released Sunday night, um, I didn't want to bet it yet. Um, I wanted to sleep on it. I wanted to have some thought about it Monday. I did bet in the lock or I did lock in the bet Monday afternoon, full disclosure, both on the side and total. My initial thought was 49ers, no problem. I then slept on it. I then started to lean more towards the Chiefs. And basically, here's where I stood. The Chiefs are going to win this game. They have the more experienced head coach in this spot. They have the most more experienced quarterback. They've been here time and time again. Um, they know how to win. They have some kind of voodoo where when they need things to go their way, they go their right way. Even when things go against them, something then goes their way to even things out afterwards. 
Um, their defense is fantastic. They're playing against a, an inexperienced quarterback, as much of a Brock Purdy defender as I am. He is only in his second year. We do have to, you know, remember that. Uh, some people still talk to him like he's a six-year veteran. This guy's in his second year in the NFL coming off being the last draft pick. He hasn't looked good in the two playoff games in the first half. He's got things together in the second half, but you can't have... If they get off to this slow of a start against the Chiefs, they'll lose. They're not making a comeback against the Chiefs like they have against the Packers and Lions. Kyle Shanahan has been showing uh, that he's a great play caller um, when he his team has a lead, or at least when the 49ers have a lead. Um, and even so, sometimes in a lead and pressure situations, he falters. He, he gets frazzled in big moments. He was the play caller for the Falcons in the 28-3 game. Uh, he blew the game for the 49ers uh, against the Chiefs the last time they played in the Super Bowl. He's had some examples where in big moments, his play calling gets a little bit frazzled. Andy Reid has evolved into a coach where he he's good in pressure situations. Not great, but he's good. Patrick Mahomes, no, I don't think I've seen a football player, even Tom Brady. Now, obviously, he's still early in his career, still a long ways to go, but I don't know if I've seen a football player. Tom Brady would be the clear number two who plays more mistake-free football than Patrick Mahomes. It's not necessarily, and, and you know, I, I'm a guy who, who's been saying for a long time, uh, and he even said it just a couple minutes ago, when the Chiefs ha- need things to go their way, they go their way. Patrick Mahomes doesn't do, it's not, but those things aren't like dropped interceptions. Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs does not throw bad footballs. He doesn't make bad decisions. Which is a big reason why, you know, they win the turnover battle every single playoff game. And that's why. He doesn't make any dumb mistakes. It is flawless, mistake-free football. The Chiefs are hot right now. They've definitely been playing better football lately than the 49ers. They've been here a million times before. They know what it takes. And they're going to get it done. The Chiefs are going to win this football game. I would advise you to bet on the Chiefs. Now, you've probably noticed I haven't yet actually said I'm betting on the Chiefs. Because I'm not. (laughs) I think I'm a masochist, and I want to feel maximum pain possible. Now, to be fair, I did bet on the Chiefs against the Bills, but I bet against them against the Dolphins. I bet against them last week. Very confidently bet against them last week. I have bet against... Patrick Mahomes way more often than I should have in the playoffs. Let's not forget. Actually, the Chiefs are generally a terrible against the spread team in the regular season the past few years. In the playoffs, terrible idea to pat, bet against Patrick Mahomes, just like it's a terrible idea to bet against Tom Brady. In the three Super Bowl, three Super Bowls Mahomes has played in, I bet against him the two Super Bowls he won. I bet on him the one Super Bowl he lost. I just can't get Patrick Mahomes right in the postseason. And even though I'm telling you, I know the Chiefs are going to win this game. The Chiefs are going to win this game. I'm betting on the 49ers. (laughs) At the end of the day, I need to stick to my strategy. And it's the strategy I have in every single sport. I'm of the firm belief that you can't handicap based on vibes. Even though several situations, it seems like you can. I tweeted out, actually, I'll bring this up. I tweeted out the perfect meme to describe betting on Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. Let me see if I can bring it up here. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see it. If not, go over to YouTube, subscribe to the Bacon Bets podcast, and watch the video of this. You probably saw me tweet it out. It is the IQ chart. It's the idiot on one side who says just bet on Mahomes. It is the medium smart people who say there are so many factors in just betting than just betting on Mahomes. And then there's the high IQ guy who says just bet on Mahomes. I don't know if I've ever created a more perfect meme than this. Betting on Chiefs games in the playoffs really is just as simple as just bet on Mahomes. That's all you have to do. Whether you think you're the idiot the drooling idiot on one side of the IQ spectrum who just like, oh, just bet, just bet on Mahomes. Duh. What are you going to do? What, you going to bet, bet against Mahomes? Do you ever seen him in the playoffs? You going to bet against Mahomes? Are you stupid? Or he might be on the other side of the IQ who's like, no, actually, the smart thing to do is to bet on Mahomes. He plays mistake-free football. He knows how to get it done. He's as clutch as any NFL player we've seen. Just bet on Patrick Mahomes. It is the difference maker. 
Whereas even though I know this is the case, I'm the idiot in the middle of the IQ graph with tears running down my eyes saying, no, there's so many more factors than just Mahomes. You can't just bet on a team just because of one player. There's 10 other starters on offense and 11 other starters on defense. It's more than just Patrick Mahomes. Even though I know I'm the, that guy, and even though I know I'm going to bet against Patrick Mahomes and lose again, I have to do it. I have to stick to my strategy. I've put my flag in the ground. This is my strategy when it comes to betting on sports. And it comes down to what would I feel more stupid doing? Betting against Mahomes and losing again? Probably, actually. Or finally, betting on Mahomes. And then what I'm predicting would happen finally happens, but it doesn't matter because I flip sides. I got to pick a side and stick to it. It's the same in blackjack, not to make a second blackjack comparison uh, in one episode. But if you have 16 and the dealer has 10, in terms of what you should do by the book, I, if I, I mean, maybe bl big blackjack players are going to tell me I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure it's like basically a 50-50. It might be a slight edge to hitting, but it's a very slight edge. But I, my, my point is that is one of those hands... Whatever you do, just do that every single time. If you're a guy who hits on 16 when the dealer's showing 10, you got to hit on 16 every single time. You can't change it up based on vibes. If you're a guy who stays, who sits on 16 when the dealer's showing 10, you got to do that every single time. You can't change the strategy up. Because then you, if you hope, if you keep it with the same strategy, it'll all come out in the wash. So that's what I've decided to do. It's the wrong call. It's the stupid call. I'm an idiot. I'm telling you, don't tail this bet. Do not bet on the 49ers. Bet on the Chiefs. All you need to know is Patrick Mahomes is their quarterback. That's it. Nothing else matters. It is the high IQ play. It's the low IQ play. It's also the high IQ play. Bet on Patrick Mahomes. I have placed my bet on the San Francisco 49ers. Now, I am very lucky. I got the 49ers at a good line. I was monitoring the, the lines all Monday, um, there was a point uh, I could have got it at minus 112 on the money line, I believe. I think at BetMGM had that number. Um, I didn't. I was hoping I was I was going to take a shot if I just got minus 110 pick them. I was going to take a shot. I got greedy. And then I saw the odds start to move up everywhere else. BetMGM was the slowest to kind of uh, move with the rest of the line. So everywhere else, it had basically at least my sports books in New York. Everywhere else had already moved it to minus one and a half, moved it back up half a point. Bet MGM was the last one, still putting them at minus one. So that's when I jumped on them. So I got minus one, minus 110 on the San Francisco 49ers to beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, after my rant about how Patrick Mahomes is the only thing that matters, um, about how the right bet is the Chiefs, I'll give you, I'll give you my take for why. Outside of the fact I just need to stick to my guns on a stance. I'll tell you why I'm betting on the San Francisco 49ers to win this game. For the majority of the season, and I'm sure you would agree with me if you think about this. For the majority of the season, basically all the season, once we hit like week 6, 7, 8, somewhere in that range. You know, when teams have played enough games that we, where we got a good idea of what teams are good, what teams are bad. The 49ers were the best team in the NFL. If you didn't think the 49ers were the best team in the NFL, the only other case you could have made was the Ravens. And then when the two teams played in the Ravens one by a lot, then the argument would have been the Ravens. But still, even if you thought the Ravens were the best team in the NFL, it was the Ravens, it was the 49ers, and then it was everyone else. Nobody in the regular season was saying the Chiefs are the best team in the NFL. Nobody. Some people went as far to say they're washed, they're done, they're not going to win. I'm doing my best to look at a full season of sample size and not get my judgment clouded too much by the two most recent games. Now, sometimes all that matters is how a team has played recently, or also sometimes we get short-sighted and we forget about the big sample size and we value too much recent games. It's a balancing act. But overall, especially with now a two-week break for both teams, I think we have to still take into consideration the past few weeks but I think these teams kind of reset after two weeks. Neutral site, two weeks off. And the 49ers were the better team for the entire season. They were. They were by far the best offense in the NFL. That you can't argue. 
the 49ers had by far the best offense. Allow me to read you some statistics for where the 49ers ranked in offensive numbers this season. EPA per play, first. Success rate, first. Drop back EPA, first. Drop back success rate, first. Rush EPA, first. Rush success rate, second. Red zone offense, first. Third down offense, third. If that's not the metrics of the best offense in the NFL, then I don't know what is. Pass game, run game, it doesn't matter. They were the most effective no matter what they did. And they weren't lopsided. It's not like their pass game was way better than the run game. It's not like their run game was way better than their pass game. And a big reason for that is how many weapons they have. They have Christian McCaffrey. They have George Kittle. They have Debo Samuel. They have Brandon Ayuk, who might be the most underrated receiver in the entire NFL. They have so many weapons. They can do so much. It's too much for other defenses to handle. Another stat that they rank first in is my favorite stat in the world. You all have heard me talk about this every single week. You're sick of me saying it. Net yards per play. It is my holy grail. And who ranks first in net yards per play? The San Francisco 49ers. Another reason. I can't go against my own stat. It is the stat that I certainly didn't create. It is a stat. I don't think anyone is a bigger defender of the stat than I am, though. Net yards per play, they're first. Average scoring margin, they're second. Now, obviously, they don't have Patrick Mahomes. They have Brock Purdy playing in the biggest game of his life. But they have a lot of offensive weapons, and most importantly, they can run the football. Last week, I took the Ravens because the Ravens had the highest run play percentage and they were like second, third, first, and a lot of rush uh, statistics. Well, the 49ers run the ball almost as much and they do actually run the ball a little bit more effectively. They're actually third in the NFL in run and play percentage, but they're, as I already mentioned, first in rush EPA, second rush success rate, and I think third in yards per carry. Now, who knows? Now, maybe the Chiefs, maybe the 49ers come out and and do what the Ravens did and just stupidly try to throw the ball up and down the field. I hope they don't. If anyone on the 49ers is listening to this, and they're not, pass along this message to Kyle Shanahan. Run the football. Please, run the football. That is how you beat this Chiefs team. Stop overthinking it. Keep it as simple as as possible run the football keep Patrick Mahomes off the field and win a boring game let me let me reference two of the losses the the Chiefs had this season first one and these were the two worst losses they had this season oh Jesus oh ESPN you gotta stop auto playing videos on my volume cranked up on my headphones and I just (laughs) clicked on the ESPN game center and a drum roll started and it scared the shit out of me These were the two losses the Chiefs had this season. (laughs) It is, nothing pisses me off more than ESPN auto-playing videos. Um, Two worst losses the Chiefs had this season, the Raiders and the Broncos. The other losses they had were Lions in Week 1, Eagles, Bills, Packers. That's it. The two worst losses they had were the Broncos and the Raiders. You know what the Broncos and the Raiders did? They ran the fucking football. Broncos ran the ball 40 times. They threw the ball 19 times. So they ran 59 offensive plays. 40 of them were run plays. They beat the Chiefs 24 to 9. Let me say that again. The Broncos ran the ball 40 times. Not six times like the Ravens last week. 40 times the Broncos ran the ball. And it worked. Time of possession for the Broncos, 33 minutes, 47 seconds. Time of possession for the, for the Chiefs, they kept Mahomes off the field, 26, sec, 26 minutes, 13 seconds. They ran the ball 40 times. They threw the ball only 19 times. They won 24-9. The Raiders, on the road at Arrowhead, ran the ball 29 times. Threw the ball 21 times. Not as big of a difference, but still ran the ball eight more times than throwing it. They actually only completed nine passes. 
but they ran the ball 29 times and averaged 5.4 yards per carry. They beat the Kansas City Chiefs on the road. Run the fucking football, please. Get Kyle Juszczyk ahead of Christian McCaffrey, run with two tight ends, and don't even think about throwing the football unless you're in third and long. I don't care about trying to outsmart the Chiefs. I don't care about what kind of game plan you've drawn up. I don't care about how much faith you have in Brock Purdy. Run the fucking football and the 49ers will win this game. The Chiefs can't stop the run. The Ravens averaged 5.1 yards per rush against them last week. The Dolphins couldn't run the ball in the cold. The Bills had success running the football against them in the divisional round. The Chiefs are 25th in opponent yards per carry, 28th in opponent rush EPA, 23rd in opponent rush success rate. They are a bottom 10, arguably a bottom 5 run defense in, in, the NF, uh, in the NFL. It is their weak point. If the Chiefs were the Death Star, which I think is an apt comparison at this point, their run defense is that little vent. Except instead of it being a tiny little vent that Luke Skywalker has to hit with his lasers, it's a gaping hole with signs pointing to it. Just do this and you win the game. Run the ball and you'll win the game. And if Kyle Shanahan doesn't run the fucking football, I'm going to lose my mind. Run the ball. I have faith that Kyle Shanahan knows enough. He didn't abandon the run last week or the week before. He might have actually against the Packers. He didn't abandon the run last week. I have faith he's smart enough to keep it simple and run the football. With that being said, he won't. They'll turn the ball over a couple times. Brock Purdy will throw a pick six, and the Chiefs are going to win the game. That's what's going to happen. The Chiefs are going to win this game, and it's going to be a frustrating watch. They'll get a couple key penalties go their way. They'll be, you know, uh, 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 third and five that goes incomplete. It looks like they're going to punt. Oh, a late flag on roughing the passer. Chiefs first down. They go down and score a touchdown. They'll have a review go their way. Uh, they'll have a fumble that'll go out of bounds, so then the other team won't jump on it. The 49ers might drop a pick. Enough things are going to go their way that the Chiefs are going to win this game. But I'm betting on the 49ers. It's stupid. It's a waste of money. The bet is already lost. I'm betting on the 49ers. Run the football. Run the football, please. My bet for the total in this game, and to be honest, if you're talking about my best bet, my best bet side or total, which one I'd be more confident in, it's the total. Um, I got a good line on this as well. I got the under 47 and a half. It's down to 47. Um, actually, there might actually still be some 47 and a halfs out there. Let me take a look. Oh, yeah. There are 47 and a halfs out there. Has it gone up since I started recording? No, DraftKings still has it at 47, but there's plenty of 47 and a halfs out there. Uh, BetMGM is 47 and a half. FanDuel is 47 and a half. CDS. Yeah, I go to the DraftKings under 47 and a half minus 105. I think this total is too high. Um, the Chiefs were one of the best over or under teams in the NFL, including the playoffs. The under hit in 70% of Chiefs games. These two defenses are the second and third um, scoring defenses in, in the NFL. Um, I think they're allowing a combined. I got it here somewhere in my notes. Just got to find it. They are allowing a combined 35.2 points per game. That's 12 points uh, less than the total, or 13 points less than what you need to hit the over. Um, obviously, the 49ers offense is very good. Um, the Chiefs offense is very good, but they're not built to score a ton of points. The Chiefs, actually, specifically in the red zone, have not done a great job this season. Um, the 49ers, I think they will run the football. At least I hope they do after that rant I just went on. If they do, that's, you know, going to drain clock, hopefully. They're not going to be able to get big explosive plays against this Chiefs defense. Um, Brock Purdy does lead the NFL in yards per attempt, yards per completion, air yards per attempt. Not going to be able to do that against this Chiefs offense. you got to keep things short and simple, um, which I think just leads to a low scoring affair i think that's why the under was 14 and 6 of the 20 chiefs games including the playoffs the under has gone 14 and 6 that's the style of play the chiefs play i actually set this total at like 40 
four and a half. Like, I think there's a ton of value on the under. Even if it drops to 46 and a half, I still like it. Um, maybe 45 and a half is what I'd set at it, but still, I'd set at it, set the total significantly lower um, than what it's set at. Uh, so my best bet in terms of side and total is the under, but uh, I'm also going to play 49ers minus one, even though it's going to lose. So yeah, I don't have too much extra to say about the total bet because, I mean, you've heard what I think about the game. I think it's going to be a little bit of a defensive slugfest. The 49ers defense is average. I recognize that. That's probably my biggest concern in this game. Um, outside of the voodoo of Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Um... I think we might see some quick scoring and then things slow down. If you want a little bit of a different bet, uh, and I'm probably going to give this out as a prop bet next week, the second half under I think is like 18-2 and two in Chiefs games. And if you, they're actually scoring 6.8 fewer points per game in the second half compared to the first half, and they're allowing fewer points in the second half and the first half as well. So um, second half under is going to be a bet for myself as well. Um, I might wait to bet it live. I don't know how I'm going to bet it yet. Um... But it's in some capacity, I'll take the second half under. Um, and other than that, I'm going to have a ton of prop bets next week. Um, I'll give you a teaser. One of my bets is going to be the heads. I'm betting on heads for the coin flip. I think I bet heads every year. I'm going to do it again. Tails never fails, except for when it does. Being the contrarian that I am, I will take heads. So that's a little teaser. I'll give, uh, give you all the rest of my picks next week as well. Um... Just trying to think if I have anything else to say about this game. No, I don't think so. I think I, I think that rant covered just about everything. I think the 49ers are objectively, when you look at the overall metrics with these two teams, I think the 49ers are the better team. There's the intangibles, the things you can't measure that favor the Chiefs. Experience, vibes, um, things like that, momentum. But I put my flag in the ground that I won't handicap based off those facts. I will handicap based off things that we can measure and what we can measure are stats. And the stats tell me the 49ers are the better team. I think the correct line is what it opened at. I think 49ers minus two and a half is the correct line. So even at the minus two line now, I think there's half a point of value on the 49ers. That's my opinion. That's it. Uh, even talking about one game that still went like 35 minutes. So I thought it was going to be a short episode and then I started ranting. I don't know how I ranted that long, but I did. It's the Super Bowl, baby. <laughs> Next week is going to be prop extravaganza. Uh, then I'm going to take a week off from the podcast. Uh, and then for these like actual bacon bets podcast, I think I'll do them for golf tournaments. Definitely the majors, probably the players as well. Oh, actually, no, I won't because... Here's an announcement. Um, shit, I'm going to be off. That's next week. I'm going to have to do that on one of my off days. Green on the Greens is back. Um, Green on the Greens is back. Uh, it is returning next week. Um, we're going to go live on Twitch, I believe, as well. It'll be Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern, I believe, is the time slot. Myself, Cody Williams, who is the fansided.com uh, golf writer. Uh, we did... Uh, a show called Green on the Greens for a uh, for one season. We didn't do it last season. It's back this season. Uh, we give a 30-minute preview on picks, do top 20, top 10, top 5, and pick to win every single golf tournament. Uh, so my golf previews actually won't be on the Bacon Best podcast because they'll be on Green on the Greens. I guess maybe the next time uh, after next week that uh, you'll you'll get a Bacon Bets podcast episode might be uh, conference tournaments uh, for uh, college basketball. Uh, but the other thing I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to try live streaming 6 p.m. Eastern on Twitch and on YouTube. Um, I think I'm going to call it the Church of Gambler, Um, And that's going to be a uh, every day of the week uh, at 6 p.m. Eastern, an hour before games tip off or puck drop for hockey. Um, I'll be going over my best bets for that day then. So I'm going to try to get into this Twitch live streaming world. Uh, it seems to be popular in the sports betting space. It's time I try to crack into that. So that'll be uh, not the week after the Super Bowl. It'll be the week after the Super Bowl. Uh, I'm going to start doing that at 6 p.m. Eastern. So keep an eye out for that. Please 
Subscribe to the Bacon Bets podcast on YouTube. Rate and review the audio version of the podcast. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. Um, bet on the Chiefs. Don't f- listen to me. Bet on the Chiefs. Listen on the under bet. I like the under bet a lot. Don't take my bet on the 49ers. Just bet on the Chiefs. It's Patrick Mahomes. I'll be back next week. I don't know when I'm going to record. Um, today's Wednesday. I think earlier in the episode, this is my brain by the end of football season. I think early in the episode, I said tonight was Tuesday night. It's Wednesday night. Next week, I'm probably going to do the prop show on Tuesday night, if not Monday night. So I'll get at least a day earlier next week. Um, I'll have the prop show out for you. Um, other than that, I'm done talking. My, my brain has turned to mush, if you couldn't tell by listening to this episode. i am taking three days off um, after the Super Bowl, I guess, except for the golf show that I forgot I signed up to do next week. Um, and I'm not going to watch any sports. I'm going to delete social media off my phone and then i'll be back good to go i need three days i need three days no social media no sports um and i'll be good to go and ready to gear up for march madness let's go baby thank you all so much for watching gamble or bless i'll talk to y'all next week for the super bowl prop bet extravaganza